Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this series, I'm going to be showing you a new text editor called Visual Studio Code. Now, Visual Studio Code, as you can see, is free, open source, and runs everywhere. That means you can use it on OS X, Windows, and Linux. So just like Atom or Sublime Text, this sort of follows in the steps of these new sort of text editors that follow in the footsteps of things like TextMate and Text Wrangler, things like that that came before it. Now, what is cool about Visual Studio and why should you use it over, let's say, Atom or Sublime Text? Well, Visual Studio Code is in fact built on Electron, which is the same thing that Atom is built on. So you might assume that VS Code ends up having the same issues that Atom has. And in fact, you'll be happy to know that VS Code is without many of these issues. For instance, I've been using Atom and Sublime Text for a long time. I've been using both of them. Uh, and in some projects, they work just fine. Sublime Text performance-wise works well all the time. However, as my project grew, Atom got slower and slower. And initially, Atom wasn't a great fit for me because I felt like it was a little slow and improved. And then as I got really comfortable with it, I really liked it. However, once my projects got bigger, Atom did not work. And in fact, I saw a lot of things. If you Google Atom high CPU usage or Atom high memory usage, you actually get some people who work on Atom saying perhaps Atom isn't the right platform for your development if you need something faster. So that brings me to Visual Studio Code. Now, how much faster is Visual Studio Code? Well, I can't necessarily give you any sort of real metrics. However, I'm using it on the same project that really caused Atom to stutter and have not had any issues. It's been a really nice experience. And at first coming directly from Atom to Visual Studio Code, I was not convinced. But let me but let's actually check out Visual Studio Code here and you can see some of the things I like so much about it. So let's go ahead and click download. And it's gonna just download a zip, just like we'd be used to with any sort of other application. Now you can see that there's you know, a lot of good stuff here and it tells you you can watch these basic videos or things like that. We're gonna be covering all the basic stuff, but what is it Visual Studio Code give you that some other platforms don't? Well, it gives you a built-in interface for things like Git and uh, debugging allows you to debug directly from Chrome. And it gives you IntelliSense, which is sort of their auto completion and syntax highlighting, which is great and occasionally will get in the way and annoy you. However, it is very, very nice. Now the Git stuff that's built in is top notch and works really, really well. And the debugging stuff is great too. Now there's also a whole ton and ton of plugins and extensions. Some of the theme support I wish was a little bit better. For instance, you can't really theme VS Code itself like the sidebar. Right now it's only changing uh, the code and some of the tabs you know, this blue bar is probably here to stay for right now, unless you want to get in and tweak the CSS. What VS Code does really well is it borders the line between a full on IDE and a text editor so that you get access to a lot of features that you wouldn't get it normally access to in a lot of other text editors, but you get them in a nice easy package that you can also just use as a text editor if you'd like. So, okay, I opened up the zip, finished downloading. I have VS Code here. I'm gonna drag it to my applications. And from my applications, I'm going to go ahead and just drag it into my dock. And it won't leave there because it's what I'm using currently on my main machine. Okay, so now that that's there, we can click Visual Studio Code. Yes, we want to open it. Thank you, Apple, for looking out, I guess. Um, let's come in here, let's open this, and let's make this a nice big size here. So at first glance, VS Code looks very familiar to what you'd be used to. We have our line number, we have our tabs. Over here we have some files, we have searching, we have Git, we have uh, debugging, and we have our extensions. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna open up a new project or not a new project, but an old project. I'm gonna open it up in VS Code so we can just sort of see what it looks like out of the box. Okay, I'm dropping this in creates a new window for us. I'm gonna maximize this a little bit. 
the old option and shift and click this green button right here, it's gonna zoom it up full screen rather than go full, full screen. And you can see here, this is what we have. To show all commands, you do, do command shift P and that brings up all your commands. To go to a file, you can do command P. To find in files, you can do command shift F and it's gonna give you the find button. And then if you just hit F5, it would give you to the debugging, or you can even toggle the built-in terminal, which is nice to have a built-in terminal. Now, many times I still use iTerm too, uh, just because I like it so much and I have all my profiles set up, but having the option to be able to, let's open up the terminal here, uh, the, the options to have a built-in terminal here is really nice, especially just for up and getting your app up and running. Okay, let's close this. Let's close this search and let's check out the files here. You can see over in the left-hand column, we have sort of a similar explorer to what you see in other platforms. The benefits are here is that we get a little bit more uh, action here. We get some in new folder, new file, refresh. We get collapse all, which will close all of these if we open them up. If we click to open a file, you can see it looks really nice with the default color. It's a little bit washed out, but you can always change your syntax theme easily enough. And we also have open editors, which is basically just our files that are open. If we click that, it's gone. Okay, so this isn't going to be a full on about VS Code right here, just a little introduction. As you can see, we have everything up and running and we have VS Code going and we have our project open to it. If you didn't catch how I opened our project, I simply just dragged the project folder onto the icon and it opened it up similar to as any other program that you would use like this. But VS Code is a really nice alternative. Over the next few videos, we're gonna be showing you some of the finer features. We're gonna be showing you uh, some of the great extensions, some of my favorite stuff. We're gonna get this tuned up so that it is working really nicely for you. You can add your own snippets, you can add your own extensions and just sort of really customize VS Code to work really well for you. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video, hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.